As I get into the sermon this morning, the message, um, I want to just ask this morning, I think today would be a good day to do this. Um, you can see up on the screen what I'm going to preach about, liberty. Maybe someone could just stand as a testimony and just tell as an American what liberty means to you. Uh, how you would define it or how you see liberty. Anybody have any ideas on that? Yes. message this morning. Somebody else, what liberty means to you? Anybody? Go ahead. that fought World War II, they're just about gone from us. And they truly were a great generation of people. Would to God that we could bring some of that back, restore some of that dignity and pride in our country. Amen. Somebody else? Anybody else? Go ahead, Sister Pam. Oh, 
Amen. One more. One more. No more? I'm proud to be in there. I am too. I am too. Now I'm ashamed of some of the things that our politicians do. I'm ashamed of some of the things that the people in this country do. But when it comes to who we are, what God has given us, I'm not ashamed to be called, number one, an American. And I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian American. Amen? Take your Bible. Turn to Isaiah 61 and Luke chapter 4. Isaiah 61, Luke chapter 4. A, a lot of... What goes through our mind this morning when I asked that question about liberty, a lot of it had to do with the men that bought that liberty. And I'm referring to the men who served in their country. Talking about the sacrifice, there are those who never left the battlefield. They gave that ultimate sacrifice. And then there are those who left the battlefield and came home. And they have sacrificed just about every day with some of the memories and some of the things that they lost back on that battlefield. And to those of you that served, we have a church, we have a nation who is thankful. So to those of you who have served, I would like the rest of you to stand and give a round of applause to all of those who have served their country, the armed forces. Would you do that? Amen. There is one who knew about liberty, knew about freedom, and believed in it so much that he was willing to pay the ultimate price. And of course, I'm referring to Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, and he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now I want you to look in Luke chapter 4. I have verse 18 up on the screen, but I want us to kind of go back and sort of get the context of what's going on here in the book of Luke chapter 4. By the way, as I read this to proclaim liberty to the captives, let me say this. World War II was about stopping tyranny. Tyranny from Japan, tyranny from Germany. The Korean War was about stopping tyranny in the Korean Peninsula. And I'm talking about the tyranny of communism. Now that's a word that you haven't heard in a while. That's a word and, and an ideology that at one time a majority in this nation stood against and in some cases stood against it zealously. Ronald Reagan was a fierce enemy of communism. And that shaped him and molded him to become the president that he was. And at that time, had we not had a president who took a strong stand against communism, there is no telling what the Soviet Union would have done in this country. We may have been lost back in the 80s because of that. I still stand against communism. Socialism, I don't care what breed of it is called, 
It's still communism. It is wrong. It is of the devil. And it should not have any place in a Republican government. And I said Republican. Our nation is not a democracy. The mob does not rule. We are a nation of laws. We are an, what is it called? A um, constitutional republic. Representative republic. We are to vote on men who represent truth and righteousness and our Republican form of government. And anybody who wants to run, as far as I'm concerned, should be willing to stand and represent and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I tell you that we have enemies against the Constitution in public offices in this country. Oh yes, I'm preaching an American message this morning. And it's a Christian message too. Okay? And I'm not ashamed of it. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit uh, into Galilee. And there went out a fame of Him through all the uh, region round about. And He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's what we just read, Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty... Them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And something I was going to say a while ago. We have several men in our church that fought in Vietnam. And while some of you may not agree with the politics of that war, but let me tell you, there were... There was tyranny in Vietnam, in Cambodia, communist tyranny. Communism is a godless, God-hating, gospel-hating form of government that seeks to put harsh and cruel burdens upon the people. And we sent our boys over there to defend uh, against communism... To help some people who could not help themselves. And if America is going to be a leader in this world. Then I am in full agreement of us being as strong as we are. And as good as we are. Helping people and nations who cannot help themselves. It is the Christian way. Is it not? And again, you may not agree with some of the politics of it. But we were trying to help some people who could not help themselves. And if you've ever seen the killing fields in Cambodia, you know what I'm talking about. Who served in Vietnam? Thank you. I I figured you did. Okay, you're of that generation. I appreciate you. I still go to these guys. If I, if they just look like they were in the military. It sticks with you, doesn't it? Okay? We got guys in the military. They still honor the flag. And don't trash it. Amen? We appreciate you. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus Christ came to bring liberty to the captives, it's what Isaiah 61 said. And then when he read it, he said at liberty them that are bruised. Those that have been injured. Those that have been damaged. Jesus Christ came to bring forth liberty to this world. It is what our nation was founded on. It is the idea and the principle that we have in this country. 
And I'm going to say some things about liberty, what liberty is, and what liberty is not. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all that you do for us. I thank you, God, for building this country upon decency, upon the Ten Commandments, upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for letting me be an American. And Lord, I welcome people from all over the world to come into this nation legally, do it the right way, and let them experience what it is to have true freedom and true liberty. And Father, we recognize that there are enemies of that liberty, both in this nation and spiritually, the liberty that we have as Christians. And Father, help us as both Christians and Americans to always stand against the enemies of that liberty, both foreign and domestic. Father, I thank you for the Constitution that gives me or secures for me the right to preach the gospel in this land and anywhere where people are listening today. I thank you, Lord, for heaven, the land that we're going to, the land where no invaders will ever come in, where that liberty will never die and never go away. Father, I thank you for this weekend and what it represents. Help us, dear God, to pass this time in prayer, study of the scriptures, and Father, to enjoy the liberty and the freedom that you have given us here. Help it to never be taken away, though, it, though we may pay the price for it. Help it to never be taken away from this land because this is the last place where true liberty reigns. Father, bless America. I ask you to help me preach this message, Father. We ask for your blessings and your grace in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. James Madison. Fourth President of the United States. I had this on my mind last night. And as I said during Sunday school, I went searching through a book I have of, of American quotations on how they viewed the Bible. And I want you to think about something. At one time in this nation, we had a dark history. Men felt that they had the right to own and possess other men. God corrected that in our nation and it cost us the lives of our young men and women during that time. But before the Civil War ever came about, our founding fathers, many of them, were against slavery. This is what James Madison said. The whole Bible is against Negro slavery. But that the clergy do not preach this and the people... Do not see it. What a shame that here's this man who's nothing more than a politician, president of the United States, reads the Bible and understands that God intends for all men to be at liberty in this nation. Even when the preachers wouldn't preach it, we still had men who were standing up saying that God is for, and the whole of the Bible is for liberty. James McHenry, does that name ring a bell? Secretary of War of the United States of America, I think for about 16 years. Fort McHenry was named after him. Here is what he said concerning the Word of God as it relates to liberty. He said, neither in considering this subject, let it be overlooked that public utility pleads most forcibly for the general distribution of the Holy Scriptures. He believed that everybody should have access to a Bible. The doctrine they preach, the obligations they impose, the punishment they threaten. And by the way, what good does preaching the gospel do without the law of God? The law of God is necessary in order to preach the gospel. You cannot convict people of sins if they have not been convinced that they are sinners. Somebody say amen. amen. The punishment they threaten, the rewards they promise, the stamp and image of divinity they bear, which produces a conviction of their truth, 
can alone secure to society order and peace and to our courts of justice and constitutions of government purity, stability, and usefulness. I would like to get back to a time when our politicians were useful for something. Somebody say amen. In vain, without the Bible, we increase penal laws and draw entrenchments around our institutions. Have you ever gone to a third world country? You ever been to Mexico, Kenya, other places where people have to build huge walls the tops of them, they have to cover with broken glass or some sort of cutting things or whatever just to protect their homes and their property because criminals run free in those nations. I've been to Mexico, I've been to Kenya, and I'm telling you, Cubby, we appreciate guys like you too because I'm going to tell you something. You go to Kenya, you don't find policemen patrolling the streets. You don't find cops sitting, making sure that nobody breaks the speed limits. You don't find that in those places. We have a nation that was built upon the Bible. And I'm not in fear every day that someone is going to come on my property and try to break in my home. Now, I'm not in fear of that every day, although it may happen. But I don't need a wall to protect my house. I've got something better than that. Which you can't have in other countries. You know what I'm talking about? He was right. In vain without the Bible we increase penal laws. Our prisons are bloated. We have so many people that have been guilty of breaking the law. That our court system are just letting them back out on the streets. Why? We don't have the prison space to house them. What a shame. Do you know why that is? No Bibles. No Bible, no liberty. It's that simple. Bibles are strong entrenchments. I need to shorten this so I can read it. Bibles, uh, let's see here. Bibles are strong entrenchments. Where they abound, men cannot pursue wicked courses. And at the same time, enjoy quiet conscience. Consider also the rich do not possess aught more precious than their Bible. And that the poor cannot be presented by the rich with anything of greater value. Maybe instead of giving out welfare, maybe our government can give out Bibles. Amen. Amen. Withhold it not from the poor. It is a book of counsels and directions. Fitted to every situation in which man can be placed. It is an oracle which reveals to mortals the secrets of heavens and the hidden will of the Almighty. Would to God that we had some generals in our nation, in the Pentagon, that still believed in God and the Bible. Somebody say amen. amen. Leviticus chapter 25. You can turn there in your Bible. It's the first place you find the word liberty. Leviticus 25.10 And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty... Throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof, it shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Let me explain to you what that means very quickly. During this time, according to the law, if you were in debt to someone and you could not pay it off, then you had to go and be a servant to that person. You had to yield your land over to someone as payment for the debt, or you had to go into servitude to serve somebody in order to pay the debt off. God required that every 50 years that a proclamation be made that everyone was going to be set free and their land was going to be given back to them without, even if the debt wasn't paid, 50 years, it's over with, you're set free. Liberty is to be proclaimed. Somebody say amen. We have a bell. I've seen it. The Liberty Bell. Did you know that it has this passage of Scripture written on it? Proclaim liberty throughout all the land. That was the token and the motto of our country at one time. Right out of a King James Bible. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? I say let's ring the bell of liberty from this church 
Can one church save a nation? We can. One sinner at a time. One sinner at a time. One church can save this nation. Do you believe that? Maybe God will influence other churches, other pulpits to be preaching the same thing. That we sinner at a time. God built it One in us to not want to be in bondage. Who in here, you don't have to tell what it is. Who in here at one time used to be in bondage to some form of addiction or some immoral thing or whatever? Raise your hand. Who wants to go back? There may be people sitting here that maybe at one time sat in a jail cell. Who wants to go back? See what I mean? God put it in us to want to be set free. And only Jesus can do that. He has come. He paid the price. He fought the battle. Because there are always going to be enemies of our liberty. You remember what the Apostle Paul said? I think it's in Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 2, one of the two, where Paul said that false brethren came in to spy out our liberty that we had. Those false brethren despised the Apostle Paul and what he was preaching. What he was preaching was, is that you can be saved and have everlasting life without doing the works of the law. And the people who were gaining power over everybody by forcing people to obey the law they despised that and they were the enemies of the liberty that Paul preached. And I submit to you that we have enemies of the liberty both from the gospel's sake and from our constitution's sake. We have people who do not want us to be free in this nation. Amen. So I say let's proclaim liberty. Now liberty is not a license to sin. Galatians 5.13, For brethren, you have been called into liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now I want you to notice the flag that I have up on the screen as an example. That is not and never should be an American flag. Homosexuality is not liberty. It is bondage, pure and simple. You are in bondage to your lusts, and to your wicked desires, to oppose the very nature that God has put in us. The very way that God instituted in this world for humans to exist and coexist. Was that there is one man for one woman. And anything else. In fact, I, I'll just say it like this. There very well could be in this church house, listening online, people who at one time have been in bondage to adulterous types of sins. Whether it's homosexuality, fornication, pornography, adultery, whatever. God has set them free and they don't want to go back into bondage. The liberty that God gives us is not a license to sin. 1 Peter 2.16, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Likewise, our liberty is not to be used as a legal means of transgressing God's law. So they legalize recreational marijuana in Nevada at midnight last night. What they did, they have no understanding what they did. What they just did was place an entire state in bondage to an intoxicant. 
that alters the sobriety of your mind. People say that marijuana doesn't do any harm. Who in here disagrees with that? That's not liberty. Going against God's ways, increasing immorality is not liberty. To a Christian person, it's bondage because our soul says we want to serve God and do right. But our flesh is bound and in bondage to its own wicked desires. And we say, like Paul said, oh, wretched man that I am, I want to be set free. There is freedom in Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Psalm 119, 45, I will walk at liberty for I seek thy precepts. Liberty, true liberty. And this is, this is why I had this on my mind last night concerning our founding fathers. That's why I was doing a search on the Bible. True liberty comes from God's word. This Bible sets men free, doesn't it? And if you don't believe that, then ask yourself the question, why is it illegal to own and possess a Bible in North Korea? They're afraid of it. The North Korean dictatorship, and it's not just one man, it's that whole hierarchy. They are scared to death that someone is going to read this Bible and want freedom. They're scared to death of it. That same spirit exists in the ACLU, teachers unions, National Education Association. They do not want Bibles in our schools. They've run the Gideons out. They've banned a display of the Ten Commandments in schools. In the ACL. They, they are banning in some schools. They're banning even saying a pledge to the flag. That's wicked. We, when, by the way, I don't know if, if you know this or not. When, we, when our kids go to camp every year, you know how they start the day? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands. You know, I posted that. I live tweeted it while they were doing it at camp. And some idiot on Facebook said, hmm, practicing idolatry? I banned him. I don't go for that nonsense. You want to be a Jehovah's Witness, be a Jehovah's Witness. Amen. I love this country. I remember a time, Melissa, you remember when I was in first grade, we started the day out every day, Festus Public School. They played a patriotic song over the intercom. We all stood to listen. That's how I learned about John Philip Sousa. We were playing John Sousa marches every day, and we stood and we said a pledge to the American flag. And now there are schools that are being sued, and they're outlawing pledging to the American flag. They're saying that's hate speech. Let me tell you something. They hate the Bible because the Bible sets me. Look at that verse again. I will walk at liberty for I seek thy precepts. Let me tell you something. Anybody, anybody listening to me, listen to me online, you listen to me here. If you are still in bondage, it is possible for a born-again Christian to still have issues of life that they're bound to. Over time, God will set you free. But let me tell you how He does it. He does it through the rewriting and the reprogramming of your mind when you read this book. Because this book shows you what freedom really is. It, in, it puts into you the desire to be free and then God writes in your heart the instructions on how to be free, and then God sets you free. Who in here knows for a fact that there are things that you used to do that you're not going to do ever again by the grace of God because God has set you free? Benjamin Rush. Benjamin Rush, signer of the Declaration of Independence. This is what he said. 
The great enemy of the salvation of man, in my opinion, never invented a more effectual means of extirpating Christianity from the world than by persuading mankind that it was improper to read the Bible as schools. Did you see that? He said the greatest enemy of salvation was when people could persuade people that it was wrong to read the Bible in schools. We're not sending Caleb back to public school. We're going to school him in such a way as that he knows that the Bible is the Word of God. What he does with it in life is going to be between him and God when he grows up. Now, I know all of my children are not perfect. I know it because I raised them. And I know it. Because they're just like me and their mama. And whatever issue we had, they had it in spades, man, I'm telling you. But we schooled them in such a way is that they heard the gospel and they memorized Bible verses. And then when they got out in life, those things were challenged in them by the ways of life. And the word of God wins out every single time. I want my children to be free. And I want my grandchildren to live in a country where they can still read the Bible. And if they can't read it in public school, then I want the government to get off of our back and let us school our own children the way we see fit. Benjamin Rush also said, in contemplating the political institutions of the United States, I lament that we waste so much time and money in punishing crimes and take so little pains to prevent them. We profess to be Republicans. You know what that means? You know what a Republican is? A Republican is someone who is in favor of the Republic, which is what we have. We are not a democracy. I do not want a democracy. We are a Republic. Get over it. We profess to be Republicans, and yet we neglect the only means of establishing and perpetuating our Republican forms of government, that is, the universal education of our youth in the principles of Christianity by means of the Bible. For this divine book, above all others, favors that equality among mankind. Did you see that? That means white is just as good as black. And that... Spanish or Hispanic and Asian and European and African and South American, red, yellow, black, and white, they are all precious in his sight. See, the Bible teaches that. My microphone? You might run and get me a battery real quick. I got so excited I run my battery down. Let me finish reading what he said. Is this, is this my time? For this divine book of all others favors that equality among mankind, that respect for just laws, and those sober and frugal virtues which constitute the soul of republicanism. That was in a book called A Defense of the Use of the Bible as a School Book. And I wish we would get back to that. And again, I say, if our public schools won't do it, then let's do it ourselves. Amen. 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 Liberty defended. I'll wait. Thank you, Scooter. Keep that still good. Liberty has to be defended. If you think sitting down and hoping that everything turns out okay is going to keep the defense of liberty intact, you're crazy, you're wrong. Liberty has to be defended, tyranny has to be stood against, and it has to be fought. I, today, standing here, am fighting against 
tyranny in this nation Amen. by preaching what I'm preaching. Yes. And I encourage more pastors, more church leaders to rise up with the voice that God has given us and use that voice in this nation to proclaim that we still are a Christian nation as far as we're concerned. And we intend to be that way until the Lord comes back. Amen. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I don't want to go back. Amen. No liberty without Christ. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. The Spirit of the Lord is right here. It's the Word of God. Our forefathers, when they, fought for the, for when they fought for this nation, they were fighting to defend the right to read, preach, study, and proclaim the Word of God as the Word of God. I'm not apologizing to the liberal crowd for believing that God created the earth in six days, 6,000 years ago. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed to proclaim to you that I believe that God covered the entire world with water 15 cubits above the highest mountain. I'm not afraid to proclaim to the liberal church man that I believe that the Word of God is intact, pure, incorruptible, and it's right here in my hand. Because if the Spirit of the Lord through the Bible is not present... There will be tyranny. No liberty. Noah Webster. What was Noah Webster famous for? The dictionary. Education is useless without the Bible. Noah Webster said that. The brief exposition of the Constitution of the United States will unfold to young persons the principles of republican government. And it is the sincere desire of the writer that our citizens should early understand that the genuine source of correct republican principles is the Bible. Particularly the New Testament or the Christian religion. Amen. Almost all the civil liberty now enjoyed in the world owes its origin to the principles of the Christian religion. The religion which has introduced civil liberty is the religion of Christ and his apostles. Stop right here. Muslim Islam is not liberty. It's bondage. Why are we so stupid as to allow Islam to have an influence in our government? It's crazy. It ought to be stood against. And if need be, fought against. Yes. And I'm fighting against it right now. You're fighting against it with your amen. So keep them coming. Because if, I wanna, if I'm going to hang, I'd like, to hang, I'd like for us to hang together. Amen. amen. <laughs> the religion which has introduced civil liberty is the religion of Christ and his apostles, which enjoins humility, piety, and benevolence, which acknowledges in every person a brother or a sister and a citizen with equal rights. This is genuine Christianity, and to this we owe our free constitutions of government. The moral principles and precepts contained in the scriptures ought to form the basis of all of our civil constitution and the laws. All the miseries and evils which men suffer from vice, crime, ambition, injustice, oppression, slavery, and war proceed from their despising or neglecting the precepts contained in the Bible. You want to stop all the shootings in North St. Louis? Their preachers need to start preaching this book. Amen. You want to stop all the methamphetamine labs in Jefferson County? Our preachers ought to be preaching this book. And sniffing out drug labs. And either turn them in or do, take care of it yourself. Listen, I do not want Jefferson County to ever, ever, ever be the number one county in America for methamphetamine Production. Can I get God's people to say amen? amen? It is a shame that we live in this county producing that kind of garbage. The shame, and you know who's doing it? Rednecks. Yeah. Our people. Yeah. It's a shame. It's a shame because we've got churches all over this county that won't preach this book anymore. 
That's why people turn to meth. They don't have the gospel. You got the gospel. You don't need meth. Don't need pot. Don't need liquor. Don't need anything else. You got Jesus. Amen. Boy, no, these guys, see, these guys were smart. They were right. They read their Bible. Liberty comes by divine legislation. There is no liberty where there is no law. Who in here likes speed limits? I know you do, Sterling. You've never approached one in your life. I can tell you that. I've driven behind you. I love that old man. Speed limits are the law. Speed limits is what gives us all the liberty to drive safely wherever we want to go. Enforced speed limits. Amen? Those signs are no good without enforcement. Amen? The law is what gives us liberty. It does not take it away. The law protects against things that are wrong to do. Like sodomy. Like marijuana. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth there then, he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. James 2.12, so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of Liberty. The law of liberty is the New Testament. The law that gives us liberty is the law that tells us to, number one, love the Lord our God with all of our heart. And number two, love our neighbor as we love ourselves. If we will practice those laws, both us and our neighbors will be and enjoy liberty. If we, hey, church, if we won't practice it, they're not going to do it for us. Amen? I've come to this conclusion that we do live in a time where we cannot count on our government to do what it is the responsibility of the church to do. The government is turning more and more corrupt. When they legalize things that are obviously wrong, when they legalize things that are immoral, when they, when they, under the idea of celebrating diversity, promote wickedness and idolatry, we're going to lose our liberty. So if the government won't proclaim Liberty in Jesus Christ. Liberty in His Word. Liberty in God's law. If the government won't do it, it is our job to do it. Yeah. Proclaim liberty. Don't be ashamed to tell people who you are, what you believe. Do not be afraid to tell people that they're in bondage. Ask God for a way to tell somebody that you love because they are in bondage. But see, they think they're free, but they're not. All Nevada did was just open up the chains of bondage for millions of people in that state. Because once they, now that they've legalized marijuana, they're go, they cannot fathom the drug problem they're going to have from here on out. Cannot fathom it. Let's promote liberty. Let's be a free people in Jesus Christ. Can I hear God's people say amen? amen. You're proud to be an American. You're proud to salute your flag. Proud of the Constitution and will defend it at all costs. Will you defend the word of God likewise? Would you stand if you would?
If we lose our liberty here, we hope for the glorious liberty of the children of God. One of these days, John, God is going to deliver us all from this wicked, evil world. We will live in a city whose builder and maker is God. And all of the enemies of freedom and liberty are gone. No more war. No more suffering. And if we lose this place, we have a better place to go to. Can I hear you say amen? amen. But let's do what we can to not lose the liberties that we have now. Our Father, we go to you. You are the author of liberty. You're the God that gives men freedom and makes men free because of the truth. And Father, <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, for the men that built this nation, that loved their country, loved the laws of this country, loved your laws and your word, loved Christianity. And they both practiced, settled and built a nation that was built upon not Islam, not Buddhism, not Romanism, but Bible Christianity. Father, I thank you for those men. Thank you for putting it in their heart to write out the laws, giving us the liberty that we have today. Father, that liberty has enemies. Just like the liberty that we enjoy in Jesus Christ because of the gospel, that gospel has enemies as well. Father, help me as a preacher, as a man, as a Christian, as a brother to all of these great people here. Help me, God, to do my part to proclaim liberty, to defend liberty. Help these people likewise. Encourage them to defend Bible liberty, Bible freedom, to proclaim it, to promote it, to live according to it, not use it as a cloak of sin and immorality, but as the covering of righteousness that you've given us. Help us, dear God, as true Americans, true patriots, true Christians, to stand against the enemies that would take our liberties away and place men back in chains and bondage. Sin everywhere is nothing more than bondage. Father, bless these people today. Help us, Lord, to go in peace, love Christian brotherhood, to love one another, to love our communities, to love the people that are our neighbors, and to share the gospel with them to help make them free in their lives. Bless and honor your word today, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.